everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take the idea that we used in the force field video, which you can check out here, a little further and create a reusable selection node that creates a selection based off of face normals. We'll package it up so that then we can use it later in our other node trees without having to rebuild it each time. Let's get into it. Here I've got a simple icosphere subdivided a couple of times. I'll add a node tree to it. You'll see that it has two materials, a white and a red. For this example, we're going to use the set material node as our output. So let's go ahead and add that. And when the selection is true, we want to set to red. Of course, by default, the selection is true, so the whole icosphere is now red. What we want to do is create a node that we can plug into a selection that takes some position, let's say of an empty. The idea being that any faces that are pointing towards the empty would be selected. If you watched the force field video, you know that anytime we're talking about the directions of faces, we're going to use our normal input. That gives us the normalized vectors that the points of our icosphere are pointing. We want to compare those normals to the position of our empty normalized. I'm going to go ahead and drag in our empty, add a vector math node, and set the type to normalize. Remember, normalize takes a vector of any length and gives us a corresponding vector that's pointing in the same direction, but that only has a length of one. So the position of this empty is at this vector. And if we look at our information over here, we can see that it's at the x position of negative 2 and the z position of 1.5. So this length is approximately 2.5. But when we normalize it, the end of the point ends up about here. The length is 1. Now the points of the icosphere have normals coming off at these directions. And if you'll remember from the other video, if we take the dot product of these normals and this normalized vector, the closer that dot product is to 1, the closer the lines are to lining up with each other. If the dot product is 0, that means they're perpendicular. And if it's negative 1, they're pointing in the other direction. So if we take the location and normalize it, duplicate this and change our operation to dot product, and then take the dot product of the normal vectors of our icosphere and the normalized vector of our empty's location, this value will go from negative 1 to 1. For our selection, we want to have a true or false value. So we need to change this float value to a true or false. For this operation, a compare floats is probably the best choice. So we'll add a utility, compare floats. We want the selection to be true whenever the dot product is greater than some value. We'll connect the dot product here and the result here. Immediately we can see that all the way down to where the dot product was zero has now been selected because we're comparing the dot product to zero. If I make this larger, you'll see that we're only selecting where the dot product is greater than 0.7 or if we go in the other direction where the dot product is greater than negative 0.6. Let's encapsulate these things into a reusable node. We don't want the set material in our node because we want our selection to be able to be used for anything. So we're going to move these over just a little. We want the greater than, the dot product, the normal, and the normalize. We don't want the object info because we want to be able to plug that in later outside of our node group. So with those four nodes selected, I'll hit control G to group them. One of the things that we're going to want is control of this comparison value. So we'll go ahead and drag that to the input of our group. And I'll shift right click on this noodle so I can clean it up a little. There, now if I hit tab, I'll go back to my main node group. I'm going to click on this name and call this normal compare. In addition, I'm going to go ahead and click the shield. The shield, as you can see by this tooltip, is for fake user. That means that even if you're not using this node currently in this file, Blender will keep it because Blender likes to throw out things that aren't being used. So now from this node, I have my input vector and I have the comparison value. As we can see, this is working just fine. But we do run into a problem. I can move the empty around without any situations, 
But if I move the icosphere, you'll see that it's still acting like it's sitting at the origin. The reason for that is we're using the original position of the empty, which means the vector for the empty is this. So we're always relating the empty's position to the origin, and that was fine when the icosphere was also at the origin. But now that it's not, we need a different position vector for our empty. The one we actually need is this. Luckily for us, there's a setting that can change this for us. It's this original versus relative button. When you have an object info and you've set it to original, you can think of that as the world position for that object. It's the location vector of that object compared to the world origin. However, if I switch to relative mode, the location vector of this object, it's now based off the original object for our geometry node tree, which in this case was the icosphere. So now that the position of the empty is based off of the icosphere, when we move either, it's still gonna work correctly. So all that's left now is to clean up our node so that we can reuse it in the future. I'll tab into my node group and open the side panel by pressing N. I'm gonna rename the vector input to direction. This is the direction towards the object we want to look at. We'll call B something like amount. And then our output, we will call selection. We can of course clean up our node and make it as pretty as we like. Now returning to my main group, I'm going to alt drag on my normal compare node and delete it. Then if I go to my add menu and go to group, you'll see I have normal compare. When I bring that in, you'll see I have my direction and my amount with my defaults and I can connect them up like this. Now that I've saved this and I've made sure to mark this node as fake user, I can go ahead and save this file. If I want to use this in another file, this is how I'd go about doing that. If I create a new file and go to geometry nodes, if I try to go to add group, you'll see that my selection isn't here. So I'll go to file, append, I'll browse to my file that contains my node, drill into it, go to node tree, select the node that I want to import and click append. Now that I've done that, when I go to my add menu, under group, I should have my normal compare node and I can start using it in this new file. I hope this was helpful and I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you enjoyed the video, hit like and consider subscribing to the channel. So until next time, I'll catch you later.